Hey guys, last night we were looking at the B in tribe as we work through that series. B is believing in truth. And we're looking at what it means to be a disciple, to believe and to act out the truth that is the life, death, the resurrection of Jesus and everything we have in his word. So what we did was we looked at, you know, the best example of this is Jesus. So we looked at him and his time in the wilderness when he took that time away from everything before he started his ministry and he went into the wilderness um, to spend time with God. He spent 40 days fasting and just leaning into God um, and then the enemy came and did everything that we, that we talked about. First thing we're looking at in what it means to be a good disciple, a practice that we can do is to commit to quiet. Now that was a joke, just, I was being quiet after I said that. No, commit to quiet, what I mean by that is not that you have to just stop talking, but rather that you're taking time to quiet yourself from these distractions of, um, all around us. Distractions of maybe your phone, your family, your friends, school. Taking quiet time away from those things to spend time with God and to speak to Him, to hear from Him, and to just enjoy His presence, enjoy His company. He's given us that opportunity through His Spirit and through the work of Jesus to be able to spend time with Him in relationship. So just being able to commit to that every day, growing in your relationship with Him by committing to quiet, by getting rid of all of the distractions of life and really focusing on Him. So Jesus was a really good example of this. He often took time away from His disciples to go pray, he often went um, to places by himself to just spend time with his father. He was the best example of that. Um, in the wilderness, he was doing the same thing. So, the first practice we can see of somebody who's a disciple is to committing to quiet. Second point we looked at was studying God's word. We really want to be spending time every single day or quite often in his word, learning about it. You know, we have this privilege of having the word of God, having the story of Jesus. Um, it's an amazing privilege that we have that we get to be able to read through that. And so being able to study his word and just learn about how Jesus walked and even before that in the Old Testament or even the letters of Paul, but being in God's word and letting it fill our lives, not just reading it, but studying it and committing it to our hearts that we would act out in that way. And Jesus did that in the story we looked at in the wilderness. When the enemy came at him, he was responding with scripture. You can tell that, I mean, Jesus knew everything, but you can tell that he knew the scripture, that he had studied it. In Luke, we read about a story of him um, hanging out in the temple as, as a boy. It kind of challenges me to be a little bit better studying God's word. Last thing we look at, the third thing, is choosing good friends. Right after the wilderness story, Jesus goes and he chooses the 12 disciples. And last week, if you guys remember, we were looking at the I, invested in community, and it's all about choosing good friends, choosing people that are going to treat you well, that are honest, they're real, they're caring, those kind of friends, surrounding yourselves with those kind of people um, so that you can accomplish God's purpose for your life. It's easier when there's other people around us that can help us do what God wants us to do. So choosing good friends is really, really important. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He chose his 12 disciples, even though one was Judas, kind of awkward. Hopefully you guys don't choose a Judas, um, but choosing good friends to surround yourself with to accomplish his purpose. So guys, those are three practices that we can have to be a good disciple of the word and a good disciple of the word.